Okay. I want to um, begin with something very important to me, which is acknowledging the land that I have the privilege of today sitting on and being in my warm, cozy home um, here on the shared unceded territory of the Kwantlen First Nation. I live in um, what we now call Fort Langley, um, which is on the edge of the Fraser River. And um, it's kind of a pivotal point of colonization in um, our province. And I'm mindful of that as I enjoy walking uh, daily in this place and um, sitting in my position of privilege um, to enjoy my life with so many opportunities. And it's important for me to recognize that because I take very seriously now the call to action. Um, and I have uh, dedicated myself to learning and listening as much as I can because I still feel like I am in the infancy of um, understanding what, what it really means to participate in reconciliation. Um, as a teacher librarian, I believe strongly in the power of story in particular, particularly people's stories, but I'm learning a new appreciation too for the story of land and nature and what it tells us. Um, so as it applies to our session today, I believe that when we are talking about equity, we are um, talking about removing um, barriers for all people to access opportunity. And I believe that colonization put in place many, many, many restrictions and barriers on our Indigenous people um, that have prevented them um, to access all opportunity. And um, we know too, looking in our schools, that there is a um, significant amount of inequity um, that we can um, identify. And so it's ongoing work for us as teacher librarians to be planning and thinking about assessment and our practices and how they can, how it can support um, providing opportunity for all students. Um, so <laughs> this, this slide was supposed to be that we have 45 minutes, which feels like uh, such a short time for me to communicate um, uh, just some of like my, the culmination of my learning around this topic in the last few years. And now we have an even shorter time together. So um, it's truly going to be rapid fire for you, um, but I am very happy to engage with you in discussion around this um, after as well, um, just informally through email or social media as well. Um, as teacher librarians, uh, I really am gonna probably just blaze through this. So please pop questions in the chat and we'll see if we have some time. If not, we can connect after. But as teacher librarians, um, this image resonates with me. I share it often in my presentations because I just feel like we hold uh, so many important balls in our hands and we are constantly juggling them and evaluating which ones are important, putting down the ones that can be put down for a while um, while maintaining what we hold so important up in the air. And for me right now, that is the discussion and application of um, equity for all students. And under the discussion of equity is diversity inclusion. That was a new aha moment for me this summer is that when we're talking about equity, we are also talking about um, diversity and inclusion. And I went on a hunt for a definition of equity that I want to pin um, and use to frame my work and learning in this area. And I found this on a university website um, out of Texas. I won't tell you much more about that for the sake of time, but um, read, I'll just read this for you. Grounded in the principles of fairness, equity makes diversity and inclusion central to establishing policies and practices, creating opportunities and ensuring each individual has the tools and support they need to achieve their individual success. And with that definition, I just get so excited to read, thinking about the role we have as teacher librarians and how easily we have access to all the students in our school and the opportunity 
to um, provide this individual support and tools that every student needs to be successful. Um, you've probably seen a version of this uh, infographic in the past. Um, I won't speak much to it, um, but we know that when we talk, oh, I'm just trying to move our move my thing around so I can see you. Okay, when we talk about um, equality, that means everyone gets the same um, tool or the same opportunity. And we know that that doesn't work for our unique, diverse um, population of humanity. Every human is different and has a different need. So giving everyone the same bicycle is not is equal and yet um, not um, not helpful. <laughs> um, whereas equality, giving um, everyone the bike that they need, that fits them, that uh, is tailored to them for their unique needs to go on a bike ride, we know that that is equality. And a deeper layer, I really liked this um, extension to this infographic, is that of inclusion. Um, does everyone have to ride a bike to go on the ride? Or could there be something else? Um, or does everyone even have to go on the bike ride? I know when I take my children for a walk, I've got one on a hoverboard, one on a scooter, one is running and I might be on my bike or walking or whatever we're doing. And we don't all have to do the same thing because we don't want to do something different, um, but we're enjoying the time together. Um, just trying to think what I can... All right, we still have 25 minutes, we're good here. Um, then thinking about uh, that being married to diversity and wanting to move into positions where we're celebrating diversity, we have to know what to celebrate. And um, this is not, in my opinion, a complete uh, infographic of diversity, but it's a taste of some considerations um, that we can reflect on when we are considering the different diverse parts of our own identities and that of other people's. Um, there's lots of these diversity wheels out there. They all look a little different. I have yet to find a really good one for students. I find them all very adult oriented. So if you have your hand on one or if you come across one, I'd love for you to share that. But when we're talking about diversity, we are considering the many facets of our students. And that's a tall order for us as teacher librarians when we might support 500, 600, 1,000, 1,500 um, students in a year. To get to know all these different facets is um, quite an impossible task. But I do believe that depending on um, how we are looking to support them and um, give them the opportunity to thrive in their learning, there's going to be slices of this that need to be considered and that we need to learn about um, when to support our students. So for example, I, I see this one on the left, green thinking styles. That would be a really important thing for us to know about our students when we're trying to support them in an instructional strategy around how to learn something. So in summary of our uh, educational equity, why this is important, why we're doing this, and I'm gonna link this to inquiry in a minute. Um, this is a little uh, sentence that I wrote to keep myself focused while I love the other definition, it's quite lengthy and wordy, and this is something that I can remember every day, that um, these parts, diversity, equity, and inclusion work together when we can say that we are all different, and we are equals, and everyone thrives. So the equality piece is um, uh, putting us all on the same playing field while looking at everyone as unique and ensuring that everyone has what they need to thrive in their learning. And we believe, I believe every single teacher is a teacher because we do believe that all children have gifts, strengths, and have something to offer, and they deserve to grow and be thriving citizens. Um, and my question is just for myself, and something I want to share with you is, does my teaching and does your teaching reflect this belief? Um, and while I'd love to give you the rest of the afternoon to explore that and reflect on your teaching, um, maybe it can be done at your own time. Um, let me just 
I always do this. I get presenting and I get talking about something and I miss things that I had hoped to tell you. Um, but when we're thinking specifically about our teaching, um, what are the essential elements of our um, learning opportunities that really will support an equitable opportunity for our students to access that learning? And this is by no means an exhaustive list. It's just something to get us going. Um, so essential to equity is um, planning with all your students in mind. This does take a degree of knowing who your learners are, um, but the learning goal for that opportunity is known to the students. Um, if they do not know what the goal of the learning is beyond I'm supposed to produce this, um, it's going to be hard for them to advocate for what they need for their learning because all they're focused on is producing a product. Um, the assessment piece of this is largely formative. Um, we are doing ongoing assessment to not only know our learners and how they're engaging in the learning opportunity, but also how they're doing um, as they're building their competencies. And that's reflected in the learning goal. I have a planning sheet I'm going to give you, and um, it really does embody all of these things. So it sh I'll show you in a very practical way how this could look in your planning. Um, Open-ended instructional strategies. So here we're talking about low floor, high ceiling opportunities that we're, we're engaging students in. And whether we have pre-readers or strong readers, we have um, an instructional strategy that allows an access point for all of our learners. Um, quality resources. So we might need different pieces of text to engage our students. We might need different modes to get them to be accessing information. Um, having quality resources um, is another strong, is another important access point. And that just summarized um, can be, that all can be summarized by saying that we need multiple means for engagement for our students. Um, for learning and give them multiple ways to communicate their learning. Um, so in our planning, when we're aware of these essential elements, we are planning for equity. And when we're planning for equity, we are acknowledging our students' diversity, their diverse needs, their diverse strengths, and we are addressing inclusion that all of our students have a spot in this learning opportunity. They all have something to share. And inquiry is just this beautiful vehicle that can easily incorporate all of these essential elements. So um, how are we doing out there? I am um, looking to see if I can see, I have no idea if you guys are chatting in the chat or what is happening. Oh, I see one chat, doing well. Okay, thank you, Morgan. I really appreciate you saying that. And I see a thumbs up. Thank you so much. Sometimes. I went a lot last year when I was sitting in my living room a lot working, I would be worried that I'd be presenting or something and I would have been talking to no one or my <laughs> microphone's been off the whole time. So I really appreciate your feedback there. Okay, thanks, Fiona. So I want to share this with you. I'm going to acknowledge right now that this is a work in progress. Um, I have done quite a bit of professional development in the past year around um, just my own learning of what equity is and how, um, and, and even inquiry-based learning, and then looking to see how they can work together to really provide opportunities for our students. And so what that has kind of produced is a, um, a planning sheet, and it's more than just um, like how I used to plan is I would have, you know, a planning sheet and I'd fill everything in and I'd have everything organized and step by step, I knew exactly what I was going to do for the entire inquiry. And um, this is more of a process planning page. So you are um, doing some pre-planning. Um, as you can see, on this, this infographic on the screen is an overview of the guide I'm going to give you. Um, and so it starts with some pre-planning where you are in a collaborative, as teacher librarians, we are teaching collaboratively with our classroom teachers. So you are working with your collaborative teaching partner to know who the students are. You're identifying with your collaborative partner who you are and what your strengths are, and you're allowing them space to tell you what, what their strengths are. 
And maybe you'll be working with a colleague you're very familiar with, and this can be a quick and easy exercise, or maybe you're doing this with a colleague you've never worked with before, and you might be really surprised to hear what aspects of their teaching they find are their strengths and that they really enjoy. Um, so there's a bit of pre-planning before you even get started in the planning of what you're going to do with students. So once your pre-planning is done, you move into a planning phase. Um, here is where typically I would have planned all the parts of my inquiry, the foundations, what it's going to look like, all of my instructional design and strategies, how students are going to demonstrate their learning, and then what we're going to do kind of to wrap it up um, and communicate, share our learning and have some kind of um, student-led sum summative assessment. I would have planned all of that out and been all ready to go before moving into working with students. What I'm going to suggest is true inquiry is responsive to our students. And what we need to do is plan in part and take action with our students. After that action, we use what we learn from them to plan our next steps. So when we see under planning foundations of inquiry, that you will work with your colleague to plan the foundations of your inquiry. And then you're going to get started and take action with your students where you introduce them to the inquiry, you're getting information and feedback from them that you use to then plan the next parts of your inquiry. Are there questions about, let me just check our time here. Oh, we're good. Okay, I think we'd have till 11.05. Are there questions about this overview before I show you the page and we dive into that? Please feel free to unmute and ask a question or please feel free to, um, type it in the chat. And while I give you a minute to think about that, I'm going to find the link to put in the chat so that you can access the document I want to share with you. Oh, I put it on my screen, my desktop so that this would be easy for me. There it is. Okay. Can we get a copy of the presentation? Absolutely. You got it. Okay. So I'm hoping I can just drop this in put it in the chat. Did you get the file? It's a PDF. Can you let me know if you're able to download that and open it? Perfect. Thank you, Brandy. Okay. So I am also going to open it here so that you can look on the screen. And I hope the first thing you notice is that, um, okay, sorry, lost my Zoom page, but still here. Okay, looks great. Okay, is there anything that I need to give you? Prince George, LLC? <laughs> I'm sure that's not your name. But I actually think you're not seeing my, I think you're seeing something else. Okay. I think I'm going to stop sharing. Was there a group um, uh, together? Hi, everyone. <laughs> Hi, Andrea. This is um, Prince George Secondary School. So our computer is having technical issues and we're not able to use the actual Zoom app. Um, is it possible to email the PDF to one of us or like share like a Google Docs link or anything? You bet. So here is my email address. If you quickly email me, I'll just email you back with the link with it in the. Thanks for your patience, everyone. Is there any if there's anyone else who's not able to get it because you're not in Zoom, just email me and I'll quickly send it so that you can open it up. It's also not imperative that you have your own copy this minute. Um, what I was gonna try to do is share my screen so that we're looking at the document together. So right now you should be able to see it. So maybe what I'll do is we'll, we'll spend our time together looking at this, but I will absolutely be sending you, um, if you didn't get it already in the link, the digital copy. And this is an invitation for you to um, use this as is or to use it as something that you um, take pieces from um, or make some changes to. So um, as you can see, this is a specific to teacher librarians collaborating with a classroom teacher. This is a planning and a process guide. So something you will work over time with your colleague to um, develop. 
It is version 1.4, only in that I'm constantly revising it. And as I add more resources and questions, and as I keep learning, I am constantly revising it. Um, so if you come back to this at some later date and are wondering what I've updated, please let me know. I'd be happy to share that with you. Um, there's a little bit of an outline around inquiry, the roles of the teacher and the students up in the purple box there. You can read that another time. But essentially, we want teachers to be the facilitator and the guide, and we want our students owning their learning. We want students engaged in a way that um, they are taking the reins on their learning, and we are not, um, we're the guide on the side, um, and we are supporting our students to dive into the learning. And um, just to clarify, this is not a uh, model for um, open or free inquiry. This is very much a guided inquiry that is um, done in community, collaboratively, working together. And you as, your te as teachers, you are um, inviting students into learning opportunities that where they can, um, um, where students are in, in the role of learners and even teachers. Um, in the green box at the top are um, just the names of some of the educators that I've explored to create this document. I didn't write specific things down because I read two of Layton's books, listened to a podcast and found some information online about his work. So there was four or five things that I kind of consulted on. Same with Faye Brownlee the fabulous, hilarious Shelley Moore, so, and on and on and on. So if you have any questions about the specific resources that I engaged with, you can email me and I can let you know. Elena Aguilar might be a new name for you, I'm not sure, but she wrote a book called Coaching for Equity, and she's done a lot of um, uh, discussion on teachers considering, considering equitable approaches to teaching. Um, Okay, so all that being said, let's get into it. And you'll see that pre-planning piece is what we start with. And um, back on the infographic, you might have noticed there was three colors. So the colors on this um, planning and process guide are intentional. If it is a light blue um, box, like this teacher profile and teacher librarian profile, that is um, indicative of something that you as the teachers are using to plan. If it is a white box, like this learner profile, it's something you want to do with your students to engage them. Um, and then if it, it is green, it's often a reflection piece um, for you and your colleague to reflect together. And those, I mean, I know, reflect, 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 but those are the pieces that actually will drive the equity pieces deeper. Your the reflection questions are very intentional to ensure that as you're moving through this, you're not losing the equity piece. So you're going to start by uh, working with your colleague to um, just know what are your strengths, what role do you want to play in this collaborative partnership. That's as a teacher librarian often a piece I found I didn't communicate very clearly um, what was going to be my job, what was going to be the teacher's job, and that resulted in often me taking on a majority of the work. Um, and it was not um, as rich of an opportunity for students because there was not truly that collaborative planning and teaching happening. And um, then maybe to identify something I want to learn from my teaching partner. So you would record that for both the classroom teacher and for you as the teacher librarian. Um, oh, and then look to the students and we talked about the importance of needing to know your learners to provide equitable, equitable opportunities for them. And this is really where you're going to depend on your classroom teaching colleague because they will know the students. And thinking uh, to ask questions um, like what motivates your students? What are they interested in? What are they talking about? Um, what do they need to be successful? Um, what parts of inquiry will stretch each, each student? Or is there collectively a stretch, like um, communicating through writing? Maybe, you know, we hear teachers say like, oh, I got to really work on the writing with this group of learners. Their, their writing could be a lot better. So what part of the learning would maybe be a focus? But we want to make sure these are um, um, strength-based understandings of our students, what they have to offer, what we can leverage to keep them learning and growing. 
And um, we're going to be ongoing collect on collecting this information on an ongoing basis throughout the inquiry. It doesn't just live in this pre-planning plate pre-planning place, but you have worked with your colleague to establish some understanding of who your students are. And if nobody knows, then ask them. Ask um, the students who they are and what it is that they need to um, be successful in their learning and what they're into, what they're, um, and how they might want to learn or what they might want to try. Um, I'm going to skip through a few pieces for sake of time. You can read those pieces on their own. Um, but then working again, this is a pre-planning piece, um, is, and this is really important because it's the foundation of your inquiry. So working together to pull out of the curriculum what it is that you really want to have your students accomplished. Now your inquiry question or your focus, whichever you decide to present, is going to be rooted in <clears throat> the content or the big idea of a curriculum. I like working with big ideas when I'm writing this because um, they're so open-ended. And so what you're going to do is, um, and I actually have examples, so please email me and I'll email you my example sheet as well. I can just give you the whole package. <laughs> um, and uh, so you can have a big idea, like let's say at the secondary level, we know vaping is a really hot topic right now. So uh, we are going to, that th there's a real world application to that, but we want to couple it with something in our curriculum. But the content here is what is going to engage students and drive the content of uh, what they are learning, but truly the learning goal, what we hope students are learning are out of the curricular competencies and the core competencies. So we are gonna also write a learning goal that sounds like, and this is Leighton Schnellheit's work, we're all gonna get better at such and such. So maybe we are working with our English um, teachers and we want students to, um, we're, gonna, we're gonna root this in um, an ELA big idea about accessing information from different perspectives and thinking critically about it. I know that's in there somewhere. Um, and so our learning goal is going to be, um, so our inquiry focus might be vaping. Um, and the work that I read around a asking an inquiry or giving an inquiry focus um, instead of a question um, is simply that when you ask a question, a student's response is to answer it. Whereas if you give a focus, you can then ask, what are your questions about this? So we could ask an inquiry question like, um, is vaping really as bad for you as everyone is saying? they're gonna to want to answer that question. And in inquiry, we want students asking questions because that is an, that's an engagement piece. It gives us information about what they're actually curious about and it can help um, tailor the inquiry to um, their, uh, their interests and where they're gonna go. So when we give a focus like vaping and ask students, what do you want to know about this? What are your questions about our focus? Um, we can um, drive the inquiry a little deeper, responsive to our students. And the learning goal sounds something that um, speaks from our curriculum. We're all gonna get better at thinking critically about a variety of types of information, okay? Um, and then we need some success criteria. So how are we gonna know if students can do that? Um, what I can statements can we present so that students can evaluate whether or not they're learning that? So I can access um, information online and in print. I can evaluate online information. I can think about three different sources of information and write a conclusion. I can think critically about all of the information and come up with my own opinion. Um, so those success criteria, those I can statements, and the learning goal are posted somewhere, very visible, so that all of your students know exactly what they are learning. So I'm realizing I need 45 more minutes to work through this whole, <laughs> um, this whole planning process um, because we have only five minutes left and I saw someone post something in the chat. So let me quickly, um, no file, okay. Um, 
Is there time given to get familiar with the subject before formulating questions? Ooh, this is a background knowledge question. I'm really glad you asked this, Morgan. I find sometimes hard. Yes, um, I totally agree. Uh, so sometimes when we start an inquiry, the main problem is we assume students know quite a bit about the topic and we keep going when truly a lot of the work has to happen um, around building background knowledge. So the great thing about structuring your inquiry this way, let's go to the next page and maybe this will help. We are going to start our inquiry the same way every time. We're gonna present an, a provocation that is really exciting, that um, gets students thinking about the topic and it can be anything. It could be a short video clip, it could be a speaker, like a guest speaker, it could be a field trip, it could be a quote, it could be an artifact. Um, whatever you think will engage your students. Let's use our vaping example. Um, maybe you have found some statistics about vaping that are really powerful and you might wanna present that to them and get them very excited about it. And you're gonna build their curiosity around the topic, share the focus or the question um, with your students and um, then invite students at this point to brainstorm their questions. The reason why we do it right here at this point, and again, we're, we'll do it later when we refine, is because it gives us information about what they already know, what they don't know, what they're curious about, and what we can do next. So I think that I fell into that problem too when I used to try to get my students questions, but I had already planned beyond what they were going to be asking me. So now I'm asking them and they might have really surface level questions about vaping or um, maybe they reveal to me that they haven't really thought much about it or maybe it reveals to me they're actually, this isn't really relevant, they're not that interested in it. And so what I need to do then is change my focus but my learning goal remains the same. I still want them accessing information, thinking critically, comparing what they have learned um, and I, evaluating what they've learned, that learning goal is the same, the I can statements are the same, that's what I really want to know if they've learned. The content could be monkeys, vaping, um, furniture, it could be anything. The content, we want it to be rooted in the curriculum, um, and yet um, the competencies are truly the focus of the learning. Content just drives the excitement and the interest for our students. Um, so at this point, asking students to brainstorm all the questions they have about the focus or the, or the question that you present to them will give you the information you need to know what then do we do in the learning opportunities. So we have all of their questions and we use them in this next piece, sort and refined essential questions. We use those to, uh, we work with our students to talk about open and closed questions. We rewrite questions as open and closed so they know the difference between them. And on the right hand side, if I'm talking and you're reading, these are just considerations or clarifications that will help you along the way. Like what is a closed and open question? Um, why, how, what is often, those are just great starters for deeper thinking questions. Um, and so what you're going to do is together as a group, you're going to approve all of these questions and you're kind of come, come, so you're going to come up with some essential sub questions that you're gonna to work to chase down. And again, this is just content that is keeping them engaged. And yes, it is reflected, reflecting the content in our curriculum. Yes, it's content we want them to know, but truly our learning goal is the competencies. Our new curriculum is competency driven competency focused and the content is just um, the vehicle that it keeps students engaged and builds their general knowledge and understanding but the inquiry is focused on developing what students can do um, we have one minute <laughs> so i don't have time obviously to go through the rest of this but i hope there's enough in the um uh, in the in the sidebar that can give you an idea of what I have uh, hope for you to do or to consider as you move through the planning document. But as you can see, you'll do some pre-planning and then you're going to get started with your students. So sharing um, at this point, all you've shared is the uh, inquiry topic 
or question and the next step and then you've refined it you have an understanding of what you're doing in terms of content but now you're going to share the competency piece the learning goal and sharing it like we're all going to get better at accessing information thinking critically about it blah 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 this is how we're going to know you need to know if you can do this and this is putting students in that formative assessment place that along the way as you're learning you're giving them opportunities to say can you do this can you access um, an online source and evaluate it? You can't. What do we need to do to ensure that you can? And that's the focus of the learning. And checking in with students, groups of students. So this might then look like whole class instruction um, as a result of knowing where they are or small group instruction or individual instruction or co-teaching across um, between students. And because you have um, more than one teacher, you can be really flexible and responsive to your students and what they need in order to say they can do it. Um, I'm over time. I'm sorry, this day and time is, is crazy. So I am sorry we don't get through this. I would have loved, loved to complete this with you, um, but you get to the point here where you're designing different learning opportunities, um, thinking about those essential lesson, um, um, essential uh, elements of a lesson and, um, and engaging students in different learning opportunities while in these green bands stopping to reflect as you're moving through the learning opportunities. So that is the reflected equity um, piece all throughout this document. Um, I'm going to stop sharing at this moment to actually tell you who I am, because I just realized I didn't do that. <laughs> um, and uh, hopefully we can connect outside of this space and you can ask me any questions you want about the document or any of the learning I've done. Um, but I'm Andrea LaPointe and I work in the Surrey School District. I am a helping teacher and I specifically work with the teacher librarians. So my title is teacher librarian helping teacher. So it's my full time job to support teacher librarians in our district. Um, so that gives me space to do a lot of professional learning and to do work like this and to go into schools and to try things and revise things. Um, and I, yeah, I'd love to support you and I'd love your feedback if there's something in the document that you have a question about. Um, and please feel free to use and adapt because it is a culmination of many other people's amazing work. Um, so there you go. <laughs> and please email me lapoint underscore a um, at surreyschools.ca if you uh, have questions or have feedback, but I really appreciate your time here today and um, yeah, have a great rest of your day. I will stay on here too. I know we have a break. So your next session starts at 11.15. And you know what? I'm actually presenting at that one. And so I think I need to spend my break getting that one open sooner. So unfortunately, I won't stay on here for questions right now, but please email me. Have a great afternoon, everyone.